I've been using Zoho One for many years to run my business, and I was recently at the annual Zoholics meeting and spoke with some of their customers about how Zoho has revolutionized their business. Let's take a listen. I'm here with Hank Dearden from Forest Planet. First, Hank, tell us what your organization does. So we're a 501c3 organization. We're based in Washington, D.C., but we support high volume, low cost per tree, forest restoration projects uh, all around the world and uh, focusing on the areas where the trees are really needed to revitalize and um, enrich soils, uh, do water restoration, ecological restoration, and in fact, almost like whole society community uh, redevelopment projects. So uh, it's not just necessarily about capturing carbon and cooling the planet. It's also about really making a big difference on the ground for uh, communities that are sometimes on in the, in the, mostly in the developing world who are maybe on the edge of uh, desperation. I hate the word, use the word, but that's where they are. So tell us a little about the source of this problem. Why do we need to replant trees again? Well, replant Why does it just naturally happen? What's happened? Okay, so how they lost trees, it's a lot, a lot of human, mostly human encroachment on top of climate change, on top of you know all kinds of stuff, short-term uh, farming, uh, short-sighted farming policies, uh, climate change, fire, encroachment, cutting down. It's a long list. Um, some people want to uh, do encroachment on, 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 on forests for uh, farming that's not going to work or cattle grazing that's not going to work. Or maybe we'll just have a short-term return, short-term return, short-term benefit, but like long-term uh, detriment to both the, the community and the planet as a whole. It's so interesting because we just came back from a trip to Rapa Nui, Easter Island, and one of the downfalls of the Rapa Nui people was they spent so much time carving the Moai statue heads that they didn't replant the trees. Correct. And it, it contributed to the fall of their society. So yeah. it's a really important subject. And it really is because um, it's, it, it, there's a tipping point at some level that if you do cut the trees down but don't damage the soil, uh, nature will naturally kind of heal itself in her time. And that can work. But if you do damage the soil, expose it to uh, too much sun, if there's too much, say, for, for example, clay in the soil, if it gets baked, that's now like a hard pan, almost like the, a, a street. Uh, it takes a very, very long time for nature to heal itself if you've damaged it past a certain tipping point, which means that the human being now has to sort of make a project out of uh, uh, stimulating uh, the natural uh, upward positive cycle. That's what we do. So you talked about things are particularly difficult in the third world. How are things going here in the U.S.? You know, folk, um, I, I, I see, uh, I'm not an expert at that, quite honestly. Um, I, obviously, with the California fires and everything else, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And now with all the snowpack that's out there, you're going to have mudslides. So uh, it, experts in that uh, have their work cut out for them. And, I, you know, I wish them all the luck in the world. So there's that type of, like, large-scale reforestation that needs to happen in those damaged areas. But also what I do see is a lot of uh, a city by city project, like cities, trees, that, that cool communities, um, you know, get rid of, um, uh, of, of heat zones, which almost a direct connection between crime and antisocial behavior when people are just uncomfortable. Right. So uh, in Washington, D.C., we have a wonderful organization called Casey Trees that keeps us uh, give us a, a tree cover in our city. L.A. It's tree people. Uh, Pittsburgh, it's something else, and New York, it's something else. But those, uh, wherever you are listening to my voice right now, find the local tree planting organization in your city and please uh, support them to the extent that you can. So, Hank, why were you attracted to this organization to work with them? Well, uh, I was uh, more than that. I was, I'm not working for them. I founded it. Ah, yes. so why do you want to spend your life in this vocation? Well, it took me uh, a few decades to figure out that that's the right uh, place for me to be because I'm kind of a green guy and I care about the planet. I know how to count and I know how to count that we only have so much oxygen and so many people and so many degrees that we can withstand. Um, my background actually is, uh, is in sales and marketing and I studied, uh, I was a double major in math and engineering. So if you put all that together, uh, puts this together, um, you know, this is something like this falls out where uh, my business model is really I'm the connector with people who want to support me, like Zoho and other groups, uh, professional sports, sports teams, et cetera. And um, I connect them with uh, projects that are already up and running on the ground in these developing worlds. So 
uh, sure, I kind of use my sales and marketing powers for good, if you will, and just sort of sort of supply, uh, 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 apply them in a place that I think they will have the greatest benefit. So I founded the organization a little about six years ago. Um, we're about 1.4 million trees, but we really need to ramp up the speed really, really quickly. So during the pandemic, were you worried about or did people lose interest in causes that were not right in front of them in their community? Actually, we uh, we were okay during the pandemic. Number one, we also we so we do events and we do a lot of outreach, and so we pivoted pretty directly to uh, some 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 online events, some virtual events, and you know picked up uh, uh, sort of applying to that technology, and then that worked for us. But I think people are also making the connection between you know uh, individual health, i.e., pandemics, and global health. There is a connection, and uh, had a little more, more time to think about that. You know that. Yeah, it is a small blue marble. We only get one, and we really need to take care of it a little bit better. I mean, there was a lot of introspection and, and, and you know, um, uh, re, uh, revisiting of values and whatever, if you will, during the pandemic. And, you know, books will be written for centuries on that. Uh, but I think one of the things that came out was, it's like, gosh, we, you know, we're fragile. People are fragile. Communities are fragile. Uh, our societals are fa uh, fragile. Therefore, pressures on the families are fragile. And guess what? The whole planet's fragile. Life is fragile. So uh, I actually found our message was being well received during that time. So one of the things that you focused on, given your background in sales and marketing, is really to have automated core processes. How has Zoho helped you do that? Uh, immensely. I mean, so uh, the reason we are working as we do is like, you know, like high volume and I mean low cost for tree. I mean, you know, to less than 20 cents you know, can, can get that done is quite frankly if you keep yeah you know, and the re i'm sorry the reason it can go that cheap is because a western dollar goes really far in the developing world no surprise um so what i try to do is keep our costs here in the west as low as possible which means low head count and high throughput and high efficiency and high productivity right um so i can make a number of calls i can do a lot of emails i can do a lot of outreach I can have a lot of touch points through uh, all the different types of tools that Zoho and other tools that we use provide. And that keeps the, the machine going and the dollars coming in. And then I send them out to my uh, tree planting partners who are on the ground who, um, and actually specifically our model is to help fund these organizations. I find them and I vet them. I use third parties, I use satellites, I use all kinds of uh, you know, dotting I's and crossing T's to make sure that these people know what they're doing. And then I also visit them. So back to your question, having tools like Zoho and others are absolutely indispensable. Otherwise, you know, I'd, you know, I'd be, it, it couldn't happen. It could not happen. So, so specifically, which part of the Zoho suite are you using for which applications? So sure, I mean, at the core of it, actually, you know, I'm a CRM guy, you know, that is just, in, in my bone marrow, I mean, I was using CRM ACT when it was DOS back in the 90s. Well, you're a sales and marketing guy. I would assume you have to be a CRM in your bones. Right. It, it totally is. And it's like, it's just simple business processes, the five, the big five questions. Who said what, to whom, when, and what's the next action item? Right. When am I going to follow up with them? Exactly. And what am I going to say? So when I'm making notes when in my CRM for six weeks from now, I'm making a note to myself. The customer is me six weeks from now. So that's got to be a mentality. So in one sense, it really doesn't matter. I mean, I believe it was the uh, Zoho uh, founder and CEO who said, look, CRM is mostly a mentality, you know, and then it's about the tool set. Um, so I started with the mentality when I started my organization, quite frankly, I, the first thing I did was to choose my tools and uh, the CRM. And I chose Zoho out through, a, you know, a good vetting process. And then everything sort of like, that's a point of an inverted pyramid. The whole organization grew from that. Like, how was I going to organize things? It's the old, you know, uh, a place for everything and everything in its place, especially when it comes to information management. Because truly in the 21st century and probably in the 20th century, it doesn't matter what business you're in, you're in the information management business. You think exactly. you're a truck driver, you're in, the, you're in the information management business and you have a truck. You know, that's, that's, that's the mentality. So, um, yes, so CRM and I've got um, all kinds of supporters and all kinds of donor, uh, donors, small dollar individual, large dollar individual. I got grants, uh, sources. I've got corporate partners. I've got events that other people do. I do the events myself, et cetera, et cetera. And I really got to monitor the different buckets, right? So all that is set up in the CRM. 
And then the next um, uh, application that I use almost, you know, hourly or daily is campaigns and they're glued together. So, you know, the, the emails go out and the responses show up in the CRM and I can do all kinds of reports. Who do I follow up? Look, look sales at the end of the day is just make an intelligent list of people to call when you're selling, you know, product X, Y, and Z based on all the other criteria that you've defined. And use marketing so you can be there when people are ready to buy. Yes, sir. And that's why CRM is, is so important. Yes, sir. So as we move into probably a more uncertain economic times, what's your view on the future of people being interested in these types of causes? Well, so um, I'm optimistic because uh, my message is really actually kind of a one of hope. That's my real product. When people give me money to uh, plant trees, they don't see the trees. They're in Madagascar. They're in Tanzania. They're in Morocco. They're in Indonesia. I mean, they're around the world. They'll see pictures. They'll see satellites, but they're not in their hand. Really. So really, what is the product? It's almost like when you buy a lottery ticket, what are you buying? You're buying the idea, the hope that you're going to win. You're not going to win. <laughs> you know? Now you might get struck by lightning, but you're not going to win the lottery. You're not going to win the lottery. So you're buying the dream, if you right. will. You're buying the story. Right. Now, in my in my product, if you will, is that dream, is that story, but it is real. You are going to win. So that's how I sort of put that across. So even in a downturn, people still need hope. People need see some glimmer. And my organization is all about fixing things. So there's a lot of environmental uh, companies out there who will sort of bang the gong and the alarm and there's a little bit of gloom and doom and hurry up. And it's like, it's just, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. Uh, you'll never hear that from me. Every organization, I mean, everyone knows we got issues. Everyone knows we got problems. The ones who think that we don't have problems aren't going to be my customer. Sorry. But more and more people get that human beings are making an impact. And what I'm trying to say is that, look, A, we can fix it. It's fast and it's affordable and it works. So in here are the stories, right? Here's the reality, and that's what I'm selling. So maybe even in a downturn, my message will even be more warmly received. Yeah, received. I, I, I don't know. I like that, Hank, because I remember growing up in Sunday school, we used to plant trees in Israel when Israel was very young, and it was like a dollar, and you got this little certificate, and I thought it was kind of silly, but then you kind of see what that country has become, yep. and it wasn't so silly you know, 50 years ago because nope. they actually did make a difference. Tell us about the project you're doing with uh, Zoho as far as how they're helping you with your mission. Zoho is wonderful because uh, Zoho recognizes that. I mean, the, Zo uh, the conference that we're at here today, um, they're what, uh, in, in three cities, uh, what, 1,000 people uh, across all three, give or take. Um, that's got a big footprint, right? And, that's, and, and footprints are unavoidable. It's just a thing. People got to travel to get here, uh, flush the toilet, eat the food, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, helping to a, address that footprint is they are planting five trees for every attendee. So that's 5,000 trees. Now, I am not- As Oprah would say, you get five trees, you get five trees, you, you get five trees, We right? all get five trees. Yeah, yeah, just line up. I everybody, love that. Oprah, everybody gets five trees. So it adds up, right? Um, and it wasn't a huge investment for them, but it makes a big statement. Uh, the users, everyone I'm talking to here loves it. But, you know, does that make the whole event carbon offset? Probably. I don't do, I'm not a carbon scheme, and that's key. I mean, because as a math, double major in a math engineering, I love numbers and all that kind of stuff, but trying to figure out co collective carbon footprints and the carbon offset of a particular tree and a particular species that are planted in a particular way at a particular time by a particular person, a particular location, it, it's way too many variables to say it's X pounds per. Right. It's just too many. So I said, listen, it helps. Chances are the whole Zoholix is carbon negative. I won't make that statement rigorously, but I've got a confidence that it is. Um, and it's also sort of like it's a global company. It's a global awareness, right? And trees planted anywhere plant, help everyone everywhere. So, yes, uh, the local communities in Madagascar, Tanzania, Tanzania, uh, Morocco, wherever, um, are, are benefiting. But the whole planet benefits it's the most cost-effective green thing you can do. You get the biggest green bang for your buck by working with Forest Planet. I can just say that right there. Hank, I appreciate you joining us. Where can people reach Forest Planet? Forestplanet.org on the web. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook. Uh, we got a bunch of photos there. Um, it's at facebook.com, and I think our handle is go negative because we're all about going carbon negative. 
You know, it's, you know, make yourself happy. Go negative. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you.